So what are you thinking about the mental health services in Calderdale? Oh, I'm from Denholm. <laughs> well, let's think about the ones in Denholm, that's where I head up. OK, you know, it depends on what you're after. You know, I've had uh, help, I've had private help as well, you know, yeah. things like that. So it's, yeah. it's a mixed bag. No. Yeah, have you had any experiences of being transferred to Barnsley? No, I haven't. No, because there's a lot of cases that are going through the system right. and they're going to the South Yorkshire, West Yorkshire Mental Health Team, right, okay. which is over there. So a lot of people have been let down because of the service oh, of the care. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. So. No, I've had no experience with that at all. At all. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, doesn't sound good. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the lock lockdown is going to do to mental health services moving forward? There's going to be a big strain, isn't there? I, I think there honestly is. Yeah. You know, it's being in the house all the time. You know separate from family and it's going to cause yeah, mental health issues for sure. Yeah, it's going to make it very difficult for them to distinguish now how we can help everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, mental health was always under the radar to a point. And sort of, this is brought it all out in the open more, which is great. Um, but, uh, yeah, how you deal with that as a, as a, as a country or mm. as a government is yeah, yeah. totally different. Yeah. Mm. Or maybe we have to come together and deal with it ourselves now. Well, I think mm. it's, you know, it's community and... and so yeah, yeah, so well. people working together, all stakeholders coming together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. No troubles at all. So we've got, we've got the, the Dale Centre. It's called, uh, called the Dale Royal Hospital. Okay. Royal Hospital. Okay. But they're letting a lot of people down as well, oh, you okay. see. So Jeez. they're having to be transferred right. to people like uh, Keefla. Right. But Keefla Mental Health Services a and lot it, worse. It, yeah. It, yeah, it just yeah. It, this moves the strain, yeah. doesn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Gee so. whiz. Yeah. Not good. No. I mean, the thing is, with the with the pandemic and, and everything else, the cases are going up. You know, yeah. it's, it's affecting a lot of people, children, yeah. all walks of life. So yeah. it's the aftermath will be um, an interesting challenge, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, it will do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, no, cheers, guys. Yeah. Nice Thank to you talk talking to you, mate. Thank you. We've got so. We'll blur you straight we'll out. We'll blur you out. We'll blur you all out. If We've you... got an election coming up. One of the main councillors in the town wards, Bob, Metca Bob Metcalf, is lead one of the chairs for the mental health services on the board of social know. care. It's, it's, so it's a re very real illness because people can't see it, they don't understand it. Really. And uh, God love and believe all the help we can get. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me, mate. Are you homeless? I am, yes. Yeah, have you had any experiences with mental health services? Yeah. And what can you mind talking about in telling us in your experiences? Because obviously you're on the streets, you don't have a fixed address or anything like that, do you? No. Do you mind talking to us about it? That's all right, yeah. 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 So what, what experiences do you have with the mental health services in Calderdale? I, I get a, a depo injection in my bum. Mm. So, so, so I got go crazy. Okay. So you get an injection from mental health services? Yeah. Do you think the service the provider is good or bad? It's good. You find it's a good yes, experience, I, uh, yeah? Mm. I've, had, I've had an experience of being transferred to places like Barnsley. Because no. a lot of our mental health are getting transferred down to there. No, no. Yeah, so. Cool. Oh, Dale Centre. Probably Dale I've been Centre. In Dale yeah. Before, yeah. That's at Call of Dale Royal Hospital. They're alright in there as well, mm. yeah. Yeah. Like you go for a second that. Yeah. Can you, can you remember the first time you needed mental health help? Uh, about 20 years ago, sir. 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And what were your experience like? You just felt I'd like... been injecting uh, amphetamines. Right. And, uh, all of a sudden, like, my head just popped. Okay. And I started hearing voices like people trying to kill me and everything and stuff like that. Yeah. And the treatment that you've received has helped? It has, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's nice to hear a positive story because we're not getting many. You know, yeah. we're getting a lot of people telling us they can't access services. The services that they do access are very limited. You know, they're having to jump through loads of groups just yeah. to try and speak to someone, yeah. let alone receive meaningful treatment. Yeah, yeah. So it's it is good to hear. Yeah, a lot of people can get treated bad. They won't treat me bad because I've, I've like I've been long known from there. You know what I mean? So you think they're treating you differently? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I think they do treat some people a little bit bad. I don't know. I'm not too sure, but. I don't know, I don't know. Have you got any uh, friends who's had bad experiences or family? No, not that I know of, no. No. Okay, so what's your plans then moving forward? Just try and, try and get off the drugs if I can, but no, it's a matter of time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Are you in, are you in contact with the support services for addiction? I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah. alright mate. We wish you all the best. Right, yeah. Any comment on mental health services, mate, in the UK? 
Give us a comment. Come on, we just want one comment. <laughs> Hiya, mate. I've got, to admit, I've got any experience with mental health services no. in the UK. No. no. Okay. Do you think they're accessible to people? No, I'm not sure. No. no. Too difficult to access. Too difficult to access, yeah. Yeah, have you tried yourself? No. My wife's Just, tried. Your wife's tried and she's been let down? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? That's what we're out here today to try and expose that we find the services which is too difficult to access. Yeah, yeah. She's struggled. Just give up in the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is what really winds me up, right? You look where the traffic was and it's just going out. This yeah, yeah, yeah. this road here is designed for wheelchair oh, use. Yes. And things like that. But every time they do steep drivers, they block it. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's cool, and they've got all disabled bays here. Is this the just eat parking? Just eat parking. Parking here, mate, no parking. This is designed for wheelchairs, you know, no mate. Parking here, mate, no parking allowed. Hiya mate, can you do us a quick favour? Do you have any comments on mental health services within the UK? Uh, We're out here to think that people just can't access them. We think that the services are just not accessible. They're so difficult to access them. Have you had the experience or any family or friends have had? Okay. I'm currently uh, with the uh, experience of help from the mental service from the Laura Mitchell Clinic. Okay. Yeah. And she's just up there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. What's your experience with that? Very positive. They're quite helpful at times, uh, most of the time. But it was a bit difficult to get referred to. Yes. But mostly just because of my own difficulty uh, acknowledging my own problems. Okay. Realistically, I think it's an outreach thing. You have to be capable of asking for it. Mm. Okay. So is it counselling and stuff you're receiving with Lara Mitchell? Counselling and yeah. things. I was tested for some mental health disorders yeah. and other things. That's really great yeah, to hear that some it. people are getting the service that everybody is entitled to or will feel that they need to access it, but that's not the experience across the country. Um, it's a little bit hit and miss. Yeah, I'm aware. I've yeah. no delusions that a lot of people have trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, mate, well, any further thoughts before we move on? Not that. Guys, we're in Halifax today and we've met Thomas Robinson from 30 Metal Place, Illingworth, Ovenden. And uh, basically, I'm, I'm here today to tell you about my men about mental health and awareness. Basically, before you get the medication, it's really, really hard. You're, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle really bad, like I did. Like I literally have patterns like a, like a two-year-old baby sometimes when I don't have the medication. I see things. I hear things. The service when you're trying to get the service, it, you have to keep bugging them and bugging them and bugging them. No constant, no stop, don't stop. Keep bugging and bugging and bugging and bugging them, and you will get the outcome you need. Once you get the outcome, it's so nice, it's so good. The, the tablets they give you make you feel so better, so beautiful, so happy, so nice. And I'd, ad, I'd advise to just keep keep pecking at them, keep at them, keep asking, keep asking, keep keep going to appointments, keep doing what you're doing, and eventually you will get help. What was it like for uh, trying to access services? What was it like trying struggle? to access? I really struggled trying to access services for the past 10 years. I've been struggling to access services. Uh, I've been to the CAMS, I've been to the Dells unit, I've been with, sing I've been with single point of access, I've been with uh, the home, I'm currently with the home ba basement team, basement, home basement treatment team, okay. I'm currently with them and the crisis team and CAMS. And to start with, when I, w when I went to do all that, they just kept fobbing me off, they kept saying there's no one with him, there's no one with him, there's no one with him, and in fact there was something actually really up on it. Okay. And I've got, and it turns out I've got psychosis and ADHD. And for, for 10 years you were fobbed off and told there's nothing wrong. For 10 wrong years with. I was fobbed off and told them that there was nothing wrong with me and I was having, me and my family, I was getting kicked out of my mum's house because I was having these, you know, my problems were showing. I was getting kicked out of the family home, arguing with my family. At the moment, that's since I've got my medication, my life's come back to just normal, I feel brilliant. So what would have happened if you did not have that tenacity what to if, really fight for what you deserve? 
I wouldn't have been right now. I wouldn't have looked as good as this. I wouldn't have been in a good way. I'd have been a mess. I'd so have probably been dead, or I'd have probably been dead or in jail. So you could have ended up being dead or in jail, in jail. because of lack of services, and that's, that's for constantly asking for or ten years. Or homeless, or homeless on the street, and your family were asking as well. Yeah, my family's been ringing them and asking them and telling them for the past ten years they've been taking me there since I was a kid, and they've been they've just been fobbing me off and fobbing me off since I was like fourteen year old. 22 now. So you're 22 and it's took you all that time. It's to took get me out. all that time to okay. get out. So you've, you're getting the help now, so things are on the up. Yeah. And uh, so we can look at moving forward and helping other people, can't yeah. we? Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah, we can. How and can we do that? How can we do that? By making people aware of these of the of people having mental health issues and helping by helping these people and directing them on the path that I'm on. So they need to just keep doing it. We need to just keep making people aware, that's all. Yeah, yeah, so now people will see this video and they might think, I'm going to go back, yeah. I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell keep them, this them. is not good enough. Yeah, this yeah? is not good enough, yes, that's what I want, that's what I want from this. Okay, so we're looking at trying to set up some, some advice network where we can all get together yeah. uh, and, and offer some meaningful support services by the right people who are in it for the right reasons. Yeah. And what do you think about that? I'd do that, I'd happily do that, I'd, I need something to take my, my time off the days. I'm sat not doing all. I'm walking around town all the time trying to find my mates. Yeah. I could, yeah, I'd love to do some voluntary so work. Just get some voluntary work in and, and try and help that yeah. community. I'd, yeah, I'd love to help my, my community with mental health because I'm, I'm now being, I'm now getting the treatment I need and I'd love to help someone else get that treatment as well. I really would. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. It, it takes a lot. It's extremely brave what you're doing. Yeah, and since I've started the medication, I've only been on it for about a month, the Alanzapine and the Dizacamp. I take 15 milligram of lantipine at night, five in the morning, and I get a week's worth of dies of and I'm telling you now, they are working wonders. Brilliant. They're working wonders. After, like, as soon as I take that tablet, I go from feeling crappy, and I take the tablet to feeling like, yes, I feel like there's a big weight just being lifted off my shoulders. So yeah, you need to keep bugging the mental health team, you need to keep doing what you're doing. Keep telling them there is something seriously up here. They'll fob you off and fob you off, you need to keep going back and saying, look, there is something up here. I've tried, I've tried killing myself this many times. I've been to jail. I'm homeless because of my problems. You just need to keep. You just need to keep at them and tell them straight. This is not. This is not right. And I want. My, I need some sort of medication or I need some sort of help. That's all you've got to keep doing is keep bugging them and don't let them pop you off. Thank you so Thank much. You're it's well been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure to meet you too. Thank you. Take care. Hi, buddy. I hope you're okay, my friend. Are you, oh, are, you, right. are you homeless, my friend? No, I'm not, Paul. All right. Have you had any experiences with mental health services by any chance? I haven't, no. Okay. Uh, do you think that they're approachable if you're in that case or anything like that? Do I feel approachable? Do you feel that they're approachable in case somebody has mental health or anything no, like that? No, not really. No. I feel approachable. Do you think the services are good or bad? I don't interact with the services. Okay. I think they're good. You think they're good, you just choose not to interact with them? I don't choose to interact with them, I think we all interact with them. Yeah? Hi, mate. I think we all do, naturally. <laughs> what we're out here today is looking at mental health services within the UK and we don't think that they're, they're good I've enough. I've got mental health issues. We don't Hi, mate. Psychosis, I have to take a lantern and diazepam to keep me calm. For psychosis, because I there see things go. and hear things. Right. Yeah. Uh, the lantern and diazepam are helping me out. So much. I've just took a five milligram of lanzapine then, yeah. and I feel I've just, I feel so happy. I feel so, I just want to <laughs> spread my love. If yeah. you hadn't have taken that, if I hadn't have taken like? that, I'd have been like sweating, panicking, crying, upset. Police would have been there. I, I'd have tried killing myself. All sorts. How mm -hmm. did they get to that diagnosis that that medication was for you? How did they get to that diagnosis for that medication for me? Because they've been for the past ten years. My mum's been telling them I've got psychosis, and they were just fobbing us off, fobbing us off, saying we don't believe you, we don't believe you, and then all of a sudden they've just put the still just started giving me the medication yeah. psychosis and you I, found it's work and brilliant. i found it's working brilliant it is i feel so much better taking it i do what would you say to anyone else who's in the who, same who's situation in the same who state, needs help can't who gets, get it who needs help and can't get it yeah you need to get to a mental health <clears throat> service and keep bugging them and 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 bugging them until you get your own way that's what you need to do yeah. any experiences with the dales any experiences with the dales yeah i'm yeah. with the crisis team at the moment they drop yeah. that's who drops me the olanzapine off at yeah. night time i have to be in for half eight to take the olanzapine 10 15 milligram olanzapine at a night five milligram in the morning yeah and i get given a week's worth of diazepam to stay calm or if not i'm like a I literally go crazy, yeah. like a, ba a little good. baby. I'm like a little baby, yeah. you know, having a paddy. Yeah. So, okay, so you feel like a child I trapped in a man's body, yes. really, yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ask him if he thinks the services are good. Do you, you think the services are good? 
do I think the services are good? Now they're help now they're helping me, I do, but because they've been, they fogged me off for a long time I've been fogged off, they were saying there's there isn't that up with him, there isn't this up with him and there is there just seriously was some help with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't agree with that side of the things but and then not helping other people, but I do agree with what they've done for me at the moment. So you're basically saying people shouldn't have to jump through all these hoops no, to get help yeah, yeah. The... No, they shouldn't have to jump through all these hoops to get the help I've got. No, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to do any of that at all. No. And if you didn't have the tenacity to do that, like a lot of people don't, Absolutely. you would have do... still been at home I'd with nothing. Just, I'd have still been at home with nothing, at, kicking off, crying. Or possibly in jail. Or possibly in jail, or dead. Cause I, there I, you I, go. Because I was trying to kill myself as well. So what can we do as a people to get together to, to pick up the uh, overflow that's not getting what any help? You need. You, what can we? What can we do? We need to keep walking around. And we need to keep. You need to keep doing what you are doing. Yes. Yeah. Tell it. Saying, look, mental health is in a, it's, it's a big issue. Everyone needs to be aware. That's what we need to keep doing. We need to keep making people aware of the mental health issues that are a serious problem, and some people can't help. Them. Do you want to get involved in time? Yeah. Because we're looking at putting up together. Yeah. I'll do an voluntary network. work. We want volunteers. Yeah. I'll do voluntary but work. But we want volunteers who want it for the right reasons. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, and see what we can do. All right, well, you'll find us on YouTube under yeah. Society X. Society X. Yeah, and Freedom Fighter is my YouTube channel. Yeah. 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 I'm from Halifax, I'll, I'll, my friend. I like his born yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm from Halifax, born and bred I, Halifax. I, I, I recognise yeah. you from yeah. somewhere. 20 yeah. plus years I've lived in Halifax. Same, you're 22 years. Yeah. Yeah. You're 22, same. No, man. I'm 27, mate. 27? No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot. You do? Actually, do we don't want yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of Voluntary Action Calderdale? What, Voluntary Action? Action Calderdale? Yeah. They are uh, counselling services that do volunteering and that type of thing. This is my mate, by the way. Yeah, no problem, mate. They do counselling and that type of thing. What I'd suggest is you keep going round and making people aware of how serious mental mental health is and how serious people are getting out. You need to keep doing that, yeah? Yeah. We will do. Thank you, mate. Thank you you for your time, mate. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're beautiful and I love you, Zon. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, I do have a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. We're looking for comments on mental health services in Halifax because we're finding that they're not approachable. Have you had any experiences yourselves? I have depression. Yeah. Okay, love. Do you find the services are useful or unaccessible? We're out here today because we don't believe the services are accessible. They're not accessible. They're not good enough, and we're looking for people to share their experiences. Yeah. Um, if you're comfortable talking, we can, we can do an interview. If you've just got a brief comment, we can use yeah, that I'll just as give well. Yeah, a brief comment. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I'm on depression tablets, and I'd have a mugged again. Yeah. And uh, then about three weeks ago, I got a telephone call from doctors yeah. saying, they're very expensive, these tablets. You know, we, we need to sort of get you off them. Okay. I said, yeah. I'm not ready. No, no. Yeah. I said I'm willing to sort of try my dose lower from 150 gram to 100. I said, but I am not ready. And then I was getting all worked up. So yeah. that was making you worse, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. What were the outcomes of that? They just uh, downgraded me to 100 grams. Mm. So they did reduce them, so they did save some money. Yeah. yeah. But there's no way I, I'm not ready to go down. Right. Any experiences anymore? with the Dales? Sorry? Any experiences with the Dales? Because Dales is uh, called the Dale Royal. No, I've no. been on Okay, that, no. right enough. Just quickly, and we'll let you go. How do we move forward as a community? We're looking at is there things that we can do together so we can work with mental health services they to should, get better services for everybody? They should set up something just for that. Yep. It'd be clever. Yep. Um, and if everybody's in the same boat, want to go in there, you don't feel as stigmatised as you can say. Yeah, yeah, stigma is a big deal. Yep. I think yeah. it is reducing, but yeah. Yeah. Stigma is a part yeah. of it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, love. Do you have any comments on mental health services in the UK? Uh, no speaking, life. Just a little <laughs> comment then. What's the mental health services being like for you or anyone you might know? No speaking English. No speak English? No. Okay. You have a good Thank day, love. You. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think about mental health services at the minute in the UK? Um, I don't know how to use them myself, so I don't have much experience, but I've heard there's a lot of cuts going on and people having to wait a long time. Absolutely, yeah, that's yeah. what we're here about today. We're looking at just getting people's opinions on what they think's going on. Mm. We don't think they're accessible and we want improvements. Mm. Would you agree? 
Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 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 do, you any, do you know anybody who's had experience with mental health and needed support? Mm. Yeah. yeah, I've used him before. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of waiting for him to start a time like four months ago and mm. not on until like April. So, um, yeah, we've had to find a way through stuff. We're playing with stuff. Do you think it's difficult to access? Yeah, and I say, you know, GPs are great, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's probably like if you need more focus support, it's a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to jump through a lot of hoops to get it, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, girls. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you make you seem very approachable. Have you got any comments on mental health services within the UK? We're well, actually in the um, what is it? Okay, I'll thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck, mate, as well with that. Thank you very much. Excuse me, guys, can we ask you a quick comment? A quick comment? Quick yeah. comment on the state of mental health services within the UK. All right. Talking about uh, the wrong person there. No. Well, as far as I know, we're concerned, we're the only one that has a problem. Treated very well. You were looked after. Mm. Um, yes, yes, um, and it were very promptly put into place as well. Yeah, Brilliant to hear, because yeah. we find a lot of people struggling, having to jump through a lot of hoops to get access to services. Oh yeah, we're a bit late in the day, were not it? That really? was probably a down to me. Yeah. But you didn't sort of uh, get much help sort of afterwards, did you? Really have to care. Well, yes, I did. As in, they came to see me at home. Um, but it, that, that part of it tended to be sometimes a little bit slack, it, mm. if, if I'm honest, it, it was. But as far as accessing that, and I now know, need to know what to do. Well, what, what are you doing this for, guys? We're it's doing this thing. for YouTube. We're trying to put together a team, a support group, so we can work together with mental health services yeah. and try and improve outcomes. Yeah. A lot of people are feeling fobbed off. Well, I'm from Halifax, guys. I'm born bred Halifax, lived here all 20 years plus. If you look up Freedom Fighter with Jeremy MacDonald, that's my name. I'm doing it all around mainly Halifax, so you're probably seeing my face regularly. If you see me at the streets, come over and say, speak to me. I'm, more, I'm approachable, I'm a night, as you can see now. Well, I think a lot, <laughs> you know, the problem is admitting to yourself there is a problem. And I think you're quite over a big first hurdle there. Yeah, uh, yeah, accepting that you need help. But it's a difficult thing to do as well, and I can yeah. understand why people don't. There's a lot of stigma, yeah. isn't yeah. there? Yeah. There's a lot of stigma, and we're overcoming that. Quite yeah. very massive, yeah, yeah, yeah. massively. So, um, yeah, no need to feel that it's something you've done wrong or that there's anything other wrong with you other mm. than you have. Any experiences with the Dale Centre? Pardon? You know what called a Dale yes, Royal Hospital? Yes. Have you any experiences yes, with the Dales? Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, and yes. what have you ever been in there? Or? Uh, yes. Not not yeah. staying overnight, yeah, yeah. but yes, I had at least two appointments there. Maybe three. I can't, I can't remember, but most of it with me was done by home visits. Right. Thank you so Thank much you for your much. time. Thank you, love. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of your Sunday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask your opinion on mental health services within the UK? Do you uh, know anybody who has had mental health problems within Can we ask your opinion on mental health services? For a video for, uh, we don't think it's good enough in the UK oh, for people. Uh, my son's dad um, hung himself and then to try and get my son any help, he had to, he had, he had to ring up and speak on the phone. And I could have, got, could have got him to an appointment with a human. Yeah. I could have got him there. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't have done the rest of it. I think it would have been, it would have been rather than him speaking, him having to ring up, the speaking to a stranger on phone too hard. Mm. Well, that. And then if that were the first step, that's the only step. Yeah. Too friend, many hoops to jump through. A friend of mine, um, through lockdown, started. She had went into a bit of psychosis, mm. and so she felt like the government's after her. But the only way for her to get help was to either totally break, so she gets put in jails. Offer her to ring the doctors, and yeah. she's not going to ring the doctors mm. when she believes they're against, you know, the government's against her. And it's difficult to make that so, call. Yeah. You're stuck until she breaks. And it's an infection, huh? Right. Yeah. So no, people either end no up help. in jail, either end up dead. Yeah. There's, uh, no help. there's no help whatsoever. Mm. There's no help. When my son's dad to me himself, I run the doctors, and we just like, you know, I'm not 
going to be able to get him to make that call. Mm. If you given me a, an appointment to, a, to go and see someone, I could have probably got him there. I mean, I might not have been able to get him, he'd have gone in. Mm. It, I felt there were more chance of him with an appointment. Mm. It sounds like you but feel also, that they're getting down. Also, though, I do get where they're coming from. Like you say, it's hard to bring up. So mm. you can imagine how many, if you've made appointments in the past for people mm. to see you face to face. If they've not turned up, the funding. Yeah, my issue with that is it's it's their responsibility to follow that up. I feel because I think that when you you putting someone in a position with mental health difficulties to make that decision, they've got to actually go out and do that. Whilst what they're wanting to show is someone wants to make change. I understand that that's what they're saying, yeah. but I think they're misunderstanding the difficulty in just dialing that number. I feel like as well that when you've got depression, you've got a few days where you think you're all right. Mm. They're not catching and, you at that right cup, point in yeah. cycle. So, and sometimes you can feel better on a, on a day and sometimes you can mm. feel worse. So. And if that appointment's due on the yeah. day when you're down, you think, oh, you're I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. isn't it? I'm all right. Or, or you think you're all right and you're just overreacting. That's another thing, just trying to differ differentiate between whether you are actually depressed yeah. or Lucas, Lucas, come here. Or are you just being down? Or are you just having a bad yeah. time at this moment? You said, you said, you said, you said, you're self diagnosing and you don't really know. Wrong you said you'd had problems with the children's services. Do you know that actually? It were, it were, that was the difficult right. thing is he weren't a child. Okay. 19 when his dad passed. All right. But it's pinnacle age like that to lose your dad. Yeah. 19 losing your dad, uh, that's what I can imagine. And we've just been, you know, he went down wrong path then. Yeah. So, same cost so we've just had three years of him trying to get, get him back. I mean, he's just mm -hmm. back so to he's himself 22 now. now. 22, yeah. just got his first, first full job, time job on Monday. Mm, brilliant. Fantastic. But... He could have done with more help, but I just, you know, when you don't know how. Mm. Yeah, you don't know how to jump through nope. them yeah. hoops, but uh, the hoops are still there. Yes. I can only, like, you know, advise him. I can't make him make that phone mm. call. I just felt like seeing someone face to face would have yeah. done him a lot better. What do you think got him through it? Um, well, it, it, because there weren't that help there, it, it then turned, you know, he was with his face and turned yeah. out a lot, so it turned down the path. Yeah, across the same. And then yeah. started doing things that were not. Good. So yeah. I kicked him out and he went to yeah. the hostel. So yeah. then I had that for a year. I had to back off then yeah. and let him sink. And mm. just pray that he didn't just decide to go and live across the road and get crack off someone. Because mm. they could have done that. Yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. But yeah. it's a big risk for me to take. But mm. that was the only option you thought. I was about. helping too much. Not in a way by giving him things, but like mm. helping with just menial tasks and you stuff were like that. And I thought it was yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. So what do you think about the drug use in Halifax? Mm. Because it's bad in it at the moment. Bad. The teenagers at this stage. I mean, if I, uh, I mean, like, luckily I weren't a mum that would have buried their head in the sand and make excuses yeah. for that kind of behaviour. You know, I'm going to make him face what he's doing yes. and what, yeah. what's going on. And luckily, because I did that, he's okay. Whereas his the two friends, he's probably be still doing exactly what they're yeah. doing because the one just got to ignore it. Yeah. Because I say antisocial behaviour on that salt rise at the moment. Yeah. It's, 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 the thing is, you know. I thought his mates would help him, big something bad's happened, you know, yeah. but I want to ice cream, Mama. It, you can't really expect that off other people because they've got their own I things that they're going yeah. through, but I think when drugs are involved, you're not a mate anymore, you do, but I just feel like that then, because the, the drugs are in play, there's a lot more selfish behaviour that goes on. And their emotions are dumbed down then as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think that's what he was trying to do, you know, bless him, but... What's the future? How can we work together? So how can we bring people together as a community? To work with mental health services. I don't, it's really, really difficult, especially for men, especially kind of like in places where it's like still that old mentality of the stigma. Men yeah. are supposed to be strong and you're not supposed to, you know, supposed to get through anything. You know, especially in my community up there, and yeah. been a lot, a lot. We'll leave it I don't, to you. I don't yeah. know what you yeah. do because everyone's different. I felt that maybe if my son had had that help at the beginning, we wouldn't have had to go down three years of. I mean, people should be training. taken seriously when they reach out for help. People don't just ring up for fun, do they? I know, but it, it's that thing again. I mean, I'm not being. I, I don't want to speak bad, but. You know, like my son's dad, he weren't taking his care of his responsibilities, and to me, it just seemed like they were just excuses. And you know, I'm, I'm not being funny, but I, you know, I thought he was attention seeking and mm -hmm. just excusing yourself to get out of it because the behaviour continues, mm -hmm. the sorries are there, and then the behaviour continues, and you just didn't. 
Yeah. It's an illness, isn't it? Yeah, yeah but the thing, when you when I think when you're depressed, you you act selfish. I don't think you realise that you're doing that, but you put in, you don't realise how much you're sort of putting on how other people are taking it because yeah. they want you to be better, so yeah. they're upset. Oh, I understand. So then they don't want to be upset anymore. So they either then I try and help you, and when you don't come round for them and their initial help, they bugger off then because. They feel they can't do anything. Them, it? It's too much on them, it affects they, everybody, yeah, it affects your feel, family. Yeah. yeah, they feel like they can't do all. So instead of trying to help you, then they, they kind of turn away then because they think, well, we can't help them. I'm sure they call it tough I mean? love, wouldn't yeah. they? Or to be cruel, to be kind. Well, but we need more love and less yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And more so it kind and less cruel. Kind of more understood a little bit more. I don't think it's understood properly. I don't think unless you've been through it, it's not I mean, Totally agree. I feel like I had it when I just had my son, but I didn't realise how bad I was until I got better. Mm -hmm. And when I got better and looked back, I thought, oh no, you worked well. That were a normal way to go about life, that one. And once I got happier, I thought, I'm better. And I work well. But and it, when I went to the doctors and I said I work well, I did kind of think like I would feel sorry for myself. Yeah. No nope. part of stigma, no, isn't it? No, ma no, maze you were going on, you know, like people, you know, people find out that you've been through it worse than people have gone through worse than you, like, and you think that, so. I'm Those sure you went through what your son went through as well with him. Of yeah. course, because yeah. you just, you can't, you, you just, as a parent, you're just battling through what's the right thing to do, what's the wrong yeah. thing to do, what's the right thing to say, did I say the right thing, did I say the wrong yeah. thing, I've been it the wrong way. Because everything's about perspective perception as well, isn't it? Because I could be saying the right things about I think in my mind, but they could be taking it in different things. Yeah. Really Thank really you, love. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have an answer. <laughs> I think you've shared a lot of experience. Oh, but yeah, You're really useful. That. That's my experience with my yeah. My son's got his starts his first day at work is on Monday, so you know, I, when he ran me up and told me, I, you know, I knew, the relief you of is he's yeah. he's got him back, he's free. Oh that's yeah. yeah. The relief just yeah. Yeah. you know, tears of joy rather than tears of sadness. Yeah. Brilliant. We'll leave you to it anyway. Oh, Enjoy the rest of your Sunday with your son on that. Yeah. Me, mate, do you have any experiences with mental health services? Sorry? Do you have any experiences Sorry. with mental health services? No. no. <laughs> okay, thank you mate. We're making a video on mental health services in the UK. We don't think they're accessible. And we're looking for people's comments. Yeah, I could, uh, uh, yeah it's not right. Yeah. yeah. When you say not accessible, what are you what are you thinking? People are being referred by the GP. So yeah. they're going to the GP with, with issues. The yeah. GP's referring them to mental health services and what we're finding is when they approach those services there's too many hoops to jump through. Yeah, and a lot of people are reporting that they're getting fobbed off. With the lockdown it's it's made it the, the services are just so swamped now. It's made it so difficult. We just don't know how we can move forward with the way the services are right now. Yeah, and in Calderdale, the children's mental health services are failing in all aspects, and that's located at the Broad Street Plaza. And it's been in the career recently that it's failing and all that lot with the children's aspect. So I thought we'd come out today and ask the main public if they've had any experiences. I found that the services, when they're working, are superb. It, they really are, and, and for a short while I was actually in it, mm. and um, when I joined it I was just, I couldn't get over how good it was, but the thing that I did notice, and everybody who worked for it said the same, there weren't enough of them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think in lockdown, I do know that, I don't work there now because I'm recovering from a stroke, but the, the, the thing is the college that I did at, I'd go out to treat them because they're not allowed to leave home. Mm. Okay, these are people so, who work in mental health services. In all services, all okay. to do with adult health and social care, yep. mm. and mental health and all yep. sorts of stuff like that. And it's it's not that they don't want to do it, it's that COVID, sadly, has, yeah, they don't have the capacity and COVID precluded their ability mm. to, to do their jobs the way they would like. So it's not anybody's fault. Mm. Um, I wouldn't put it down to anybody being at fault at all. Uh, I would put it down to the, the frustration at the moment is that they cannot. I don't think they can do what they want to do because of COVID situation. Mm. And they are not allowed to work outside. Might change, you see, because of the jab. Mm. Okay. Now, I know, like myself, I've had my first jab. You've had your first haven't you? And uh, we, you know, you work in a, a, a circumstance yeah. in Bradford where mm. she can't, Jackie can't go out. Mm. So, um, until she gets a second one, then, so maybe when the second jab comes up, 
you might see a huge improvement, but I doubt that you'd see one until then. Okay. okay. So, Just a point of view. No so is it Collardale Mental Health Services? Because I heard you say Bradford. Talking. Yeah. No, no, yeah. That's the one I'm talking about. So it'll be the Dale Centre and then services. There's all sorts of services mm. for mental health. There's loads of them all over the place. I work yeah. predominantly in care homes. Okay. So, uh, but uh, but I do know that. Mental one. health care. It's. Um, I think people are more accepting of mental health issues now. And there are people, well-known people, Christopher Eccleston, Freddie Flintoff, that, you know, they've come out and said, we suffer with mental health issues, and that all makes it better. But as people become aware of it, the service isn't there to, to back it up. So we're taking away people's brushing it under the carpet and yes. the shame yep. of suffering, <laughs> but then there isn't a service to help them once so they've taken the huge We're reducing step. the stigma. We're yes. saying it's okay to not yes. be okay. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. However, when people say, okay, I'm not okay, there's too many there's hoops to jump there. through and there's nothing there for them because there's too much need. And then I, I work, um, I'm a support worker for Bradford Council and a lot of my clients have mental health issues. As soon as you go to the NHS mental health service, they won't look at them if they're taking drugs or they're alcoholic. They just say, oh no, we can't, we can't treat people. I can't agree with that because I well, think that's self-medicating and that. part of the problem. Well, that, that is. That's why they take, <laughs> yeah. that's why they take drugs. So it's a cop-out and a fob-off. Yeah. But they were, they were, they'll just say, no, we can't treat anybody. And that's across them. the board? That, well, yeah. That, as far as I've Blanket policy. It, yeah. Done. For mental health. Yeah. How do you think the police and that are supporting people and for drug addictions and alcohol addictions? Because they've they've obviously had a lot of problems with their cuts to their yes. budgets and things. And you see, this is something I've noticed. I think if you witness something now who falls off a bike and breaks his leg, you will ring 999 and you will get an ambulance. And if somebody has a mental health episode, you will ring 999 and get the police. It, yeah. It's not yeah. that to me. I've got doesn't... a video on YouTube where that happened personally to myself. Really? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I went and I tried to access services yeah. for over 10 years and, and I had what I'd call a breakdown where I just said, no, that's not good enough. I've had yeah. enough now. Uh -huh. And uh, I went and kind of said, well, I'm not happy about this. And they rung the police. Yeah. And I blasted it all on YouTube. Yeah. And it went viral. No, you've got to do that. Yeah, would do. Because, it, because that is what it's like. And I mean, the, the police, often it's down to the individual. I mean, there are a lot of good police. And there are a lot of not so good ones. And they're not so mm. aware of how they should be treating people. Mm. I think we've got a tough job to do, yep. as do all the frontline services. Yep. Yep. But again, it's the same thing. There isn't enough of them with the right sort of training. Mm. You know, if you could say that this, oh, yeah, we've called the police, but it's a mental health issue. Do we have a team of, you know, officers that are trained <laughs> yes, yeah, to yeah. look after the guys that have the people that have mm. mental health issues? Yeah. That, you know, that might be a service that could come in the future. Mm. We want to try and work with the services now. We want to try and put together mm. a team of people yes. and, and let's see if we can work together to get better outcomes. That's where we're at now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish you a lot of good luck with that. Yeah. Well, I think I think it would be good if we could actually have a mental health in accident emergency, you know, like we've got an accident yeah. emergency, but have a mental health one. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be a better. Idea, yeah, but yeah, we like can't. Yeah. yeah, for people, but well, it seems like we won't get we won't get that, that in the days soon. I don't think it'll come down. Though. Yeah. Over time, it'll come. Something has mm. got to change. There's a lot of pressure well, on it. To They're going to be swamped. You can't carry on as it is. Mm. It can. Um, but yeah, the we'll leave you with your data. Yeah, thank you for talking. Yeah. Really good. It will take people that have drug and alcohol with other problems. Uh, the charity mind, oh, but it's down to a charity. Mm -hmm. It's not a government funded. But the government, uh, the, you know, that I don't know what the right word is. I'm looking for. But they, they, they don't want to distinguish between the two, physical and mental health yeah. difficulties. They want them to mm. be treated as the same. Yeah, and they're not. And, and, and the, but on paper, right. they're saying they are. Yeah. And, and in, in reality, they're not. No, they're not. Well, well, that that works with firms like Healthy Minds. Mm. And there's one of them, well, it's close to the minute, you know, as they are like. Uh, the big ones in Tottenham. Yeah. Mm. And they're drunk, they're 
they're really good, but they're not enough for them. We'll have to go down and see them, yeah, and have a look what's yeah. going on. Do you think uh, Ollie Lynch is our MP? Do you think she's doing a good job with people with this illness? I generally agree with the politics, but mm. um, I'm not too. I don't, I don't really know because I haven't looked into it. It would, okay. be unfair, it would be unfair of me to comment on that. Okay. Do you have a message for young people? Oh, young people. I used to work for the YMCA. Young people, yeah. Um, I'd say, don't be fobbed off. Shout and shout loud until somebody hears you. You know? Um, young people don't. They don't need a good talking to, they need a good listening to. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. we'll leave it there. Thank you guys. Right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. What do you think of mental health services in the UK, mate? Here you go!